Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be talking about the new cube grid tool in Unreal Engine 5. Cube grid is a tool that lets us quickly block out levels or build some basic static meshes out of cubes. You can find the tool over in the modeling mode, which you can get to by clicking in the drop down on the top left or by just pressing shift and five. Then if you look under the poly model section of the modeling tools, you can click cube grid. When we activate cube grid, we get this giant mesh. And let's look at what all we can do here. So we can drag and create a selection, which is basically just giving us a uh, plane from which we are gonna do push and pull operations. Those are the main two verbs we're gonna be using throughout. When we pull, we create cubes for the plane that we're currently on. And when we push, we destroy those. We can change our selection, which allows us to do things like either grow a section out of another mesh, or if we want to, we can also punch a hole by just pushing. You can push and pull using Q and E as the default hotkeys. In addition to pushing and pulling, we can slide our current selection forward and back. The hotkeys for that are Shift E and Shift Q. When we do a slide operation, we move our selection without actually creating or destroying any mesh. So from that new location, we can then do a pull operation. Or if we want to, we can slide back and then do a push operation to destroy some mesh in the middle. Uh, another cool thing that we can do is we can activate corner mode. And in corner mode, we get four vertices around our current selection and we can manipulate those vertices with push and pull operations. So I can push a single vert here to create this weird deformed shape, or if I select both, I can build a little ramp. You can activate or deactivate corner mode with the Z hotkey. Uh, what else? So we have flip, what flip is useful for is, actually let me get a different example here. Right now, pulling causes me to go up. But if I flip by pressing T or clicking the flip button, pulling will go downward. So basically it just inverts whether you're pushing or pulling. So if I flip again, now I can pull outward. Cool. You can see all the hotkeys documented here. So as I mentioned before, we have Z for corner mode. We can push and pull with E and Q. Ah, we can resize the grid. So let's say I want to work on like something larger or uh, or something smaller to do some detail work, I can change this power of two either by sliding or by hitting control Q and control E. And that will allow me to make a selection with a finer or chunkier granularity based on my needs here. So if I wanted to punch like a tiny hole all the way through and then a little hard to see. So let's say I wanna make a big hole to the start here, and then I wanna get a finer granularity. I'm pressing Control Q right now to get a smaller grid, and I can continue to punch through my hole, make it much, much smaller. There's no light down here, so it's difficult to see. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. We're gonna punch that hole, there we go. Okay. In addition to changing the size of our grid, we can slide our selection by doing a middle mouse drag. I'm gonna reset my power two back to five. So this is pretty straightforward. It kind of does what you expect. If you hold the middle mouse, you can move the selection without resizing it. Uh, this is useful if like, let's say I accidentally miss, mess up my selection here and get some open air. I can just pull it over with the middle mouse button. We also have a grid gizmo, which can be hidden or shown with the R hotkey. Uh, when I press that, you'll see this gizmo comes up and I'll, I'll show another hotkey real quick because I don't actually want to work over there. If I control click, I can move the gizmo. So this is useful because it allows me to again do that same sliding operation, but it also allows me to change the rotation of my grid. So let's say I want to shoot out in a like 45 degree angle. I can easily do that using the gizmo. Let's see what else is there. Ah. When we are dragging the gizmo around, by default, it's just free floating. If I hold down, I believe it's control. Yes, if I hold down control while dragging, and this is maybe difficult to see in the recording, it will snap to the objects around me rather than be totally free form. All right, so that is the very, very basics. Let's, uh, let's talk about some practical examples. 
So I am gonna cancel out of here and this entire cube grid output is one static mesh. And if you look over here in the details pane for the cube grid tool output, you can see it actually generated a new static mesh. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. And put it in my content browser here in this generated folder. And this is a super useful property because that means if I want to model something and then reuse it, I can very easily do so just like I would with any other static mesh. So let's look at a real world example. I want to model a little bridge component that I can just staple together. So we're gonna create like a little base segment here. I am gonna get a little bit of a finer selection, I think maybe like this. Yeah, I think that's good. You can hold shift here as well to also just select all the cells in between. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide up three levels and then make a little handrail here. That looks good, I think. Then let's make this a little bit larger again. I think maybe like right here, kind of on the seam. I'm gonna come back one, and slide that there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put little support posts here and I do wanna make sure those touch. So yeah, like right there. And let's do that same thing right here. Do another, one more, and here as well. And then just like this, I think, to make it repeat on either side. So I'll also need one here. Yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Okay, and for the purposes of this example, I'm just gonna do the one side, but let's, uh, let's do that for now. So I have now, created a new static mesh and I can use the standard Unreal controls like alt and drag to make a copy of it. And then I could just snap them together. So if I wanted to like build a road or a bridge or something with this little rail, it's very easy to do. And I've, I've modeled this completely. And since this is all a static mesh, I can now go and actually reopen cube grid mode. And let's say I wanted to make that rail on the other side. I can very easily do the exact same thing here on just one instance of it. And this is actually, when I save it, going to update all of them because they're using the same static mesh. So I'm not gonna uh, worry too much here about getting it perfect, but I'm gonna basically do what we did before. I think I need, yeah, yeah, I just wanna, you know, Make it, make it look good. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I do want it to look good. So we're just gonna put these little posts in and there we go. And so right now I've only updated this one, but as soon as I hit complete, the other instances of this static mesh are also gonna update, just like so. And so let's say I don't want that. Let's say I want one segment to be different. Like let's say I wanna put like a little art here. I can easily go here. I can duplicate the static mesh, make a copy of it. And then I can say, use what I've got selected in the content browser. And now I'm manipulating a different static mesh from those other two instances. So if I wanted to like put, I don't know, like let's just say like a little uh, little thing here. I don't, I don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. But like a little divider there. I'm not gonna update the other two because this is a separate static mesh. So. Very easy way to create some basic static meshes. But the thing that I think is potentially more cool than that is the level block out potential. So uh, this third person template comes with, with a bunch of stuff that like we don't care about. Let's, let's just uh, delete all the playground. We're gonna delete all these cubes. I don't care about the text render actor. Uh, I don't need whatever all this stuff is. But I still have my player start and I still have my lighting. So that's fine. We're going to start by just making a big floor. And I'm going to raise my power of two back up to five here. Turn my gizmo off. Oops, I'm at, at seven there. Five is what I want. So like, we're just going to make a floor. Great, we got a floor. Uh, I want to make sure that my player start position is above the floor. So we're just going to pop him up and press the end key to drop him onto the floor. And we're gonna make sure that we spawn. We spawn, great. So let's make a little building here. 
and uh, make like maybe like just a basic little jungle gym or something for our guy to work his way through. So to do that, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see what this looks like here. Uh, I have the sky sphere selected, and I was trying to edit the sky sphere. That's why I get that error. Little bit fiddly still. Uh, you have to clear your selection to create a new static mesh, which is maybe not the most intuitive thing. All right, so there we go. I think that's 10 by 10. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five and one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. All right, so we've got a 10 by 10 right now. Let's see what that looks like in relation to our little guy. Uh, I don't see it in my world. Why not? Was I just looking the wrong way? There it is. I don't know what happened there. I confused myself. It's fine. Uh, I think that's not big enough. So we're going to go back into the modeling mode here. I'm going to just make it 10 units longer. Great. Let's also uh, expand it out this direction by 10 units. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Great. Now we have a much bigger building. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make it a little taller. We could use a different uh, material here to make this pattern a little cleaner. And in fact, let me change that after I make this a little bit bigger. That looks pretty good, I think. Um, right now, we are using just the default world mid grid material. There is a, I think it's material instance proc grid. This is an engine material, so if you don't see this, you might have to come to this little gear and click show engine content. But once you do that, you can select that. And this material is actually smart enough to uh, figure out based on world position what it should draw. So I, th I think that's a nice little tool for when we're just generating all of these different meshes. Great, so we, we have a giant box. Um, our floor is kind of like, it's not centered. I'm not going to worry too much about that, but I am going to position it here a little bit better, I think. Let's put it at 500, 1,000, and I assume we are touching the ground. Yeah, we are. Cool. And we are going to take our player start here and drag him out. And which way is he facing right now? He is facing towards the end of the world, so let's spin him 90 degrees. All right. So now we have a basic building here. And I think what we're gonna do with this building is we are gonna cut out the middle and we are going to make some doors and do some stuff here. So let's cut all this out so that we get some nice light coming through. And I'm not cutting through the floor right now because the floor is a separate static mesh. So I don't have to worry about that. All right, we'll save that. Go back into edit mode here, and I'm gonna make a door. Probably like a three by three door, I think we'll do it. Something like that. Yeah, all right, so now we are in our building here. I think I want to have like an exit door, maybe like somewhere up here we're gonna do something. Not quite sure what. And we are gonna build um, like some walkways here for our guy to climb up. So we're just pretending like we're making a staircase or something. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a couple of layers out of that wall. And let's go ahead and build a ramp real quick. So to do that, I think I want to come up to this level. Let's do like that. And can I... No, that didn't do what I wanted. That's too bad. Uh, let's try from here then and then go all the way to here. I'm going to come out too. Then I am going to change my selection to cover the part of the ramp that I want to have the incline, I'm going to press Z again to access the vertex mode here. And we are going to just drop that down. In fact, I, I actually, I don't love this. So before I do that, instead, I want to just rip these two out and we're going to leave a little bit of flat area on the floor here. So let's do that again. We'll drop this down. Great. Uh, and we're going to need to come up a little bit in order to reach our new doorway. So let's bring this across the map here. Does that go through? I went one too far. We'll bring that back. Perfect. Then I want to get a little bit of additional elevation gain, like right here, I think. So let's make it two. 
Uh, this I need to pull out as well, I think. And this is going to be a bit of a steeper ramp, but we're going to do that exact same trick. Great. So now, if we look at it, we have a ramp that takes us up to this walkway, which takes us out to this door. Let's go ahead and build on the outside of our building. I don't know what kind of game this is. Maybe it's a platformer. That's okay. Then let's do... Well, that's kind of interesting. I'm not totally against the wall. I'm not sure why that is. Let's see if that is true when I complete. Yeah, we got a little bit of a gap there, which I don't love. I'm not sure why that is. I, I need to play with that a little bit more. That might just be um, positioning. But either way, what I could do... Actually, you know what? No, here's what, here's what we'll do. We will re-edit that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to cheat a little bit. Just rebuild it. <laughs> it's not exact. I could probably play with my scale a little bit to make it perfect, but you know, this is fine. We're just we're just playing. Let's do all the way out here. Oops. Like so. Did I screw anything up in here? No, that all looks fine. And I want to maybe have this end up at that higher level. Let's start that ramp like right here. And again, we're going to play with these verts and just kind of drop it down. So now we're able to get to the top of our building, right? And this is all one big static mesh right now. So I could chop it up. I could do whatever I want with it. But right now we have one big static mesh. If we play our game, we can run into our building and we can start running around our level. Uh, you know, I, I fell off there. The, the mouse sensitivity by default is a little bit more fiddly than I'm used to. That's okay. We can climb up. We can come up here. We can get all the way to the top of our building where we just have this little edge. Uh, and, and just to like wrap it up, let's, let's add like a little platforming segment here. We're going to add some like floating pillars. I'm going to do these as a separate stack mesh. Actually, actually, we made a bridge. Let's just use our bridge, right? So, you know, since we made this mesh before, I can just drop it in the world and we can play with it. I will go ahead and change it to use that same material that we're using so that it matches a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, we can do a lot here very quickly. So, you know, maybe you climb to the top of this building and then, you know, you take a giant bridge somewhere. I don't know where exactly you're going, but, you know, it's a video game. And we drop it just a hair. And like I said, I mean, you can you can drag all this out. We now have these modular pieces we can play with. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that we can do here. I've got a little bit of Z fighting because they were overlapping. But yeah, I can also, you know, come through and clone a big chunk of the bridge all at once. We could build a bridge that turns. We could do all sorts of fun things here, I think. I'm going to play from editor right where my camera is here. And we should be able to just like run along our bridge. So that's all I got for this one. Cube Grid's a super cool tool. Uh, let me know in the comments if there are other Unreal tools you'd like to take a look at or other things you'd like to learn. And if you enjoyed this, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. I really appreciate it. Till next time, be kind to one another. Peace.